And the act of broadening the focus actually causes a person to stop thinking and doing and start sensing and feeling is actually what starts to slow their brain waves down. The redundancy of shifting your attention from one person to another person to another problem to another thing causes the brain to fire like a lightning storm in the clouds very incoherently. So as you start to open your awareness and sense nothing, we've, we've seen this thousands of times, those different networks that are firing out of order start to synchronize. And what sinks in the brain links in the brain, and the brain be becomes more orderly. It starts to become more coherent. If you could learn how to rest your attention in your heart, and where you place your attention is where you place your energy, regulate your breath, start slowing your breathing down, even if you did it for one minute, mm -hmm. you could actually begin to change your brain waves, mm -hmm. and you could actually cause your heart to start functioning more regulation and more or order. If you said, okay, I'm gonna work with my body and I'm gonna start breathing and I'm gonna start feeling emotions that I do wanna feel. Yes, it may take you a few minutes to get there, but if you keep practicing it over and over again, the heart starts producing a very profound signal. It starts to produce an external magnetic field. It's, it's, it's measurable. So now you have a coherent brain, which means you can get very intentional, and you have a coherent heart, which means you can feel the emotions of your future before it happens. Somehow you have this broadcasting of this Wi-Fi signal, uh, and the brain tends to be electrical in nature, so it sends out an electrical charge into the field. The heart is the magnetic charge. It's what draws things to us. It's the, it's the magnetic field, and now you actually, by changing the way you think and the way you feel, you're changing the signal in the field. And if you're able to maintain that state for an extended period of time, I say something magical is going to happen in your life. Something unusual, some unknown experience is going to occur. If you keep thinking the same way and feeling the same way, your life should stay the same. So we do one minute practices, we do five minute practices, we do 30 minute practices. We wanna get so good at doing it with our eyes closed that we can do it with our eyes open. Yeah, no, I, when I hear that, like I've had personal genuine experience of that, where I've done that when I've had, when I'm having a moment where I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling stressed or, you know, something unpredictable has happened and I feel that change in my heart rate and I notice my breathing change. I notice it become more shallow. I notice it become more random. I know that when I'm practicing breath work, I'm able to come back to stillness. I'm able to come back to that sense of balance. And then I'm able to actually approach the issue at hand with more clarity, with more connectedness and a feeling of confidence. But when someone else who may not have had that experience yet or may not be trained in that, they're just thinking, well, how do I solve the problem, right? Like they're, they're, they're listening to me and you're going, well, but I can't because I just, I need to solve this problem. Like you're saying like, oh, I'm gonna be 30 minutes late for a job interview, or I just had an argument with my partner this morning and I've got a big presentation this morning as well at work. Now I'm stressed about it because I'm thinking about that. Or my kid just had got, yeah, I had to rush him to hospital and now I'm late. Like, I guess when you're looking at it from a very human point of view, it's really hard to understand the value in this. What do you say to anyone who's thinking and feeling that way? Uh, no, I think it's I think it's a reasonable conversation. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, sometimes we have to be super aroused, uh, and sometimes we really have to pay attention. And sometimes there are threats and dangers where that primitive nervous system actually works in our favor, mm -hmm. and and that's the emergency system. But you got to also realize that you only have a certain amount of energy. And if you're living in emergency mode for an extended period of time, there's no energy for growth and repair. There's no energy for long-term building projects. And so when it's needed uh, and you have to outrun the predator, you go. Yeah. You don't sit and try to make friends with the predator. <laughs> We're not that good. Yeah. <laughs> you run, right? Yeah. The problem is if you keep that alarm system switched on all the time, it gets very addictive. It's a great answer. Yeah. It gets very addictive, right? And so I've looked at people's brain scans uh, and watch their brain get worse in the early days and tap them on the head and say, what were you doing in there? 100% of the time, they were analyzing the problems in their life within that disturbing emotion. 
And if an emotion is a record of the past and they can't think greater than how they feel, they're thinking in the past, there's no solution there. Mm. Cross the river, get beyond the emotion, and you'll see possibility because you're no longer in the box of that emotional state. Now, that's so much easier said than done because yeah. you're going against thousands of years of programming of living in survival. I mean, 200 years ago, it wasn't easy being human. I mean, we're in survival all the time. I mean, famine, you know, every disease. I mean, it was, it was hard to be human. And so we have to lay down the very thing 